So welcome to a new Game Stuff episode. And before I begin showing you some stuff I personally picked up, I will ask you guys, what have you picked up in the way of new Game Stuff? Maybe some new video games, merchandise, some figurines? Let me know down below. Now let's start off with some records here. And what's kind of crazy about these guys is they all showed up within one week. Yes, and I was just like, can we pace that out a little bit better? Because I ordered them a long time ago. They all just showed up in one week. But you know what, I was quite thrilled to get them. And for any of you who know me, you will not be surprised. We have Fantasy Star 2 right here. A great classic from my time for the Mega Drive Genesis, the soundtrack. And uh, I love the original Mega Drive artwork here. And then we move into, I know, I know we're gonna have a conversation about this. Fantasy Star 3, right here. Yes, a controversial game for myself. I recently made an episode on games I hate, and I included this. I did, and I stand behind it. And me and my friend Andrew have talked about it, and we had a bit of a, a laugh about it as well. We'll get to it. And then also, we got the finale. Fantasy Star 4 soundtrack, right here. Great looking stuff, so incredible. And I know a lot of people come to me and they say, why do you buy soundtracks and vinyl? I don't get it, I don't understand it. And you know what it is? Look at this. I can hold up these big things. This is the year 2023, and I have soundtracks for some of my favorite old games. I know, uh, you know, with uh, Fantasy Star uh, 3 here, I talked about the music not being so hot and being a bit, a bit, a bit of a disappointment. It definitely is, but it's still part of my childhood and it's still part of the Fantasy Star series. And I have a soft spot for, you know, for it, even though I personally don't love the game by any stretch of the imagination. But I wanted to get these four game soundtracks because I have the first game and now I have all four of them in one place. And it means something to me because these are the games I grew up with. They mean a lot to me and my friends. We have a lot of memories with them. And I just love having the big artwork here. I mean, that's what's so special about vinyl for me. And it's also, as I've said in many, many episodes, getting a moment where you get a cup of coffee or whatever you're drinking and you set some time down to make time to listen to music from a different era, from a different time, from video games. And uh, I personally love doing it. And it takes me on a special trip down memory lane to the past. Some of these games are from 1989, so I enjoy the journey, that is for sure. Okay, let's get into some video games here. And this game was a little hard to pick up. It was kind of selling out everywhere. Everybody was going crazy. People were putting these things up on eBay for ridiculous prices. I don't agree with that. I had it ordered from Best Buy. I got it in a day, so I was very lucky. My copy of Metroid Prime Remastered here on the Nintendo Switch. What can I say about this game? Uh, what do you guys think about it? Let me know down below. I'll say this, I did a first thoughts video on it and I was just gushing with enthusiasm. And I still am. And what I want to say about this game, this is, I know this is a really weird thing to say, that it's one game that I played recently and I'd say the last four, five months that I put it in and I started to play it, and it genuinely made me happy. And I think nostalgia has a bit to do with that for sure, but also the fact that the game is still great. All of these, like 20 years later, a remaster can be so great and that the game was good then, and the game is, I feel is even better now with the remaster. And I was playing it and I was exploring, I was going around and I'm like, I really, really love this game. I loved this game then, and I love this game now. And it was like no time had passed. And yeah, there was nostalgia, but it's so much fun to explore in this game and to run around. And I I don't think I'd uh, experienced anything like that at the time 20 years ago, but it didn't matter. It's not like, oh, it's in the past, it was kind of a novel thing. I was enjoying it now. And uh, Metroid Prime Remastered, really genuinely, no pun intended for the show, made me happy. Now, speaking of which, another game that is making me very happy is Octopath Traveler 2. Have any of you guys picked up this game? Are you playing it? What do you think? I'm still uh, going through all of the different characters and I gotta say, I think the writing is a lot better in this game uh, from the first thing, from the first game, and I'm not knocking the first game. I think the first game is very, very good, 
Very, very good, in fact. Uh, but I think the writing is better. Um, you know, I don't know, this is something about the charm of the graphics, of the playstyle, of the character designs. Really charming, and definitely, I'm saying it, it's definitely a game of the year for me. In, in fact, Metroid Prime Remastered is a game of the year for me, and that's a game from 20 years ago, but we're very spoiled now, aren't we? We're very spoiled with RPGs. There's just so many of them, but don't pass it up. Octopath Traveler is a game that looks like a game from the past, but which is a good thing, for I, th I think. But it also has a great story, great characters, great combat, and a great soundtrack. And definitely something to look into if you like RPGs. And don't pass it over. Don't pass it over. It's not just a cash-in on a, as a sequel. It's its own thing. It's doing its own thing with its own characters. And doing something really fresh and really new. And I really like it. I think it's a, a really big game for the year. Don't pass it up. And another game that we did not pass up this year was Dragon Quest Treasures, but I had to get a physical copy of it. Kim finished the game after about 30 hours. She really enjoyed the game. It was, it's, it's kind of surprising. I was wondering what direction it was going to go in for her, but she said, oh my god, I, I'm actually liking this game. And it's all about the treasure hunting and building up your, your fort, your base, your home base, and just filling it with treasure and characters and monsters and going off and having them explore and bring back more treasures for you. Hence the name, Dragon Quest Treasures. And I've heard some people who kind of, kind of like this game. They're like, you know, it was okay. And Kim's opinion to me matters because she's not doing it to review the game or anything like that. She gave some first thoughts, but after the first thoughts, she kept continuing to play the game and finish it. And she said, yeah, I had a really fun time with it. And you know, if you like Dragon Quest games, I think you'll like it. There's a lot to like here in the sense that there's monsters and, and characters from past Dragon Quest games. In fact, even music is back and uh, creates for a very charming experience. And if you like Dragon Quest games, pick it up. Now this next game arrived and I've got to say, I'm very excited to try it out. It's called Soul Cresta and it's a, a part of a series of these games over the years. But what I'm loving about this is by Platinum Games with a soundtrack by Yuzo Koshiro. That is a legendary combination in a shooter. So when I heard about this game to begin with, I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I'm absolutely in. It's one of the games after this episode I'm gonna throw in and play because I'm so curious about it. Just to hear the soundtrack alone, but to know by it's by Platinum. So Platinum to me is a, a bit of a gold standard. I really enjoy Platinum games. So for them to do a shooter, it's fascinating, especially in the Cresta series, to see what they do with it. I don't know. What do you guys think of this game? Have you picked it up? You know, is there, uh, there's one thing I want to know. I never asked this on the channel. Is there a lot of shooter fans on the channel? You know, I know they call it shmups now, but I, we call it shooters back in the day. Is there any shooter fans, uh, you know, uh, who watch the channel? Are you excited about stuff like that? I, I love shooters, and I don't think I get to ch talk about them as much as I would like, but uh, I definitely want to pick this up, and looking forward to it, big time. Okay, I got this in the discount bin, and I had to pick it up, because you know, any game I review, I eventually always pick it up, because I, I liked it. Usually the games I review on the, on the channel are games that I'm going to like, and this is one game that I really, really enjoyed, and that was Days Gone, and I think it really went by a lot of people's radars, but a lot of people who played it really, really enjoyed it. And I, I got a quick story about this game that is kind of interesting. You know, three years ago when I was dealing uh, with my, my sickness, you know, with my lungs and my diaphragm, nothing was working correctly, you know, I, I, it was a very bad time for me. But I was going into the hospital and having all these checks done, stuff like that, where two of the people, two of the ladies, in the uh, kind of like the respiratory clinic uh, part of the hospital were running all these tests on me. But when I first got there, I'm sitting there and they're asking me a bunch of questions and things like that. And they said to me, this is funny. They said to me, oh, your voice sounds very familiar. And I'm like, oh, and it's so funny. I always get, I know you don't, you won't believe this, but I always, I always get a little bit shy when anybody kind of recognizes me from the show a little bit. And I'm thinking, do they recognize me from the show? Am I, I, so I said to them, I said, well, I have this kind of show on YouTube. I kind of review things. And the, the woman turns around and she's like, oh my God. She's like, yes, me and my boyfriend watched your episode on Days Gone and we bought it because of you and we love the game. We absolutely love the game. And 
I was really sick at that time, but it made me so overjoyed to hear that. I was like, that was cool. I mean, because I really enjoyed the game and I, I, you know, I did my review on it. The review kind of blew up in size, but it was nice to talk to, you know, tangible people who were really there that watched the review and went and bought the game because of the review and they really liked it too. So we had a lot in common that afternoon talking. And then the other girl, she's like, yeah, I recognize you from YouTube as well. And I was like, what a small world this is. It's really, really ridiculous. So it was kind of nice to have that little bonding moment in the hospital when I was really ill over days gone. And I was really happy to, to pick up my copy here. I, I don't think we'll ever get any more days gone. It may be days gone for this game. And one more cool thing here, Taito Milestones. This is the collector's edition right here. And I'll, I'll kind of open it up this way. And it comes with the, the collector's edition right here. So many different things in here. One of the reasons why I was interested in the Taito, uh, you know, Milestones collection is because it came with the Ninja Warriors. I bought the single version of the game, so I was very thrilled to get this. And something kind of cool. I mean, it's so neat to get this stuff in 2023. I mean, of old games. It comes with this right here. And, oh, here we go. I was still over here. It's um, a pin collection uh, representing each game in the collection. And right down here, we have our pin for the Ninja Warrior. So I thought that was cool. I'm like, I'm, I can't believe I'm getting pin sets for the Ninja Warriors in 2023. Uh, makes me very, very happy. So happy to get this. And uh, another awesome thing from In End Games. Uh, I love them and I love the Ninja Warriors. So I, I pick up anything Ninja Warriors. Okay, so I went down to my local video game store, Press Start Games, and I had to pick up a couple of things. In, it was in a, like a big used bin of strategy guides. That to me is where the gold is. And so I was digging in there for about 40 minutes and I came away with a few things that I wanted to pick up. And one of them was the Nintendo official player's guide for Mario 64 here. And it, this is a nice looking copy of it to be honest with you from back then. And here we go. Why collect strategy game, you know, guides for old games? I have a very easy answer to this. It's a very easy answer. It's kind of hitting me. Like, I mean, you know, for me, uh, you know, the, like the N64 is like 20 plus 25 years ago now. And it's like, whoa. And that time remains there, but I keep getting older, but that magical times is still there. So for me, you know, for Mario Kart 64, I mean, that's a, a memory with my dad of him playing uh, Mario Kart 64. It was like the only video game I ever saw him play ever. And so it's kind of a, a kind of a special time, the N64. So I try to capture things that remind me of that time. This, this is from that era. I'm old and in the future, but this is from that time still. And so it's tangible. I can touch it. I can grab it and relate to it and go, yes, I remember this time when I played Mario 64, when I, when I owned the game, and I played it, and you know, I, I playing with my dad, it was like, it's a great memory to have. Got that, and then I got this for me and Kim. This is just a, a small one to get, and that's for Donkey Kong Country. It's the official player's guide for Donkey Kong Country. And uh, that's a, you know, a special game for me and Kim, and we played it when we went away a few years ago up in Kelowna. Kim finished the game after like so many years. Uh, later, she, she had it at home back in the day, and so nostalgic to get that. Now, this is a very special one, and it's in the best condition it's going to be, but I still grabbed it because I think it's pretty good and holds up very well. A lot of, yeah, there's a few pages that are coming out, and it's not ideal, but it's still together, and that is the Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past Strategy Guide. I'm thrilled to get anything from that time. You know, like that's even further back than the N64. And another special game for me up there as one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. Like like so many of you who, you know, uh, who played Zelda over the years, who started back then. Link to the Past has a magic to it that is something else. So I was very thrilled to get these strategy guides. And yeah, you know, I was kind of like going on a little bit of a, a trip down memory lane with them. Now, uh, there's a couple more items to go. And this is one that I would really like to talk about for a brief moment. And that is the Royal Space Force here. I finally picked up the 4K 
uh, Blu-ray of it. And um, what is this, a lot of you will say? What is Royal Space Force? Where it's up there is one of my favorite all-time anime films ever. It is. It's Mac the movie. There's, uh, you know, Wings of Bonnie Adams about Royal Space Force. I adore this movie. I first saw it in 1988. I came home from school. There was a beta tape sent to me from the anime club in Victoria, uh, an island just off Vancouver. That's how you got anime back then. You didn't download it. Somebody sent you a physical tape. You'd send them a physical tape. They would tape it for you and send it back to you. And you'd wait three months for it if you would get it at all. And I remember this tape sitting in the mailbox and I was like, oh, like, what is this? You know, and I opened it up and I'm like, oh my God, it's Royal Space Force. I'm like, this is crazy. So my sister, I think, had the only uh, VCR up in her room at that time. So I went in there, closed all the blinds. I put the tape in and I laid down on the bed and I just sat there. And this is the thing watching anime back then, which is so ridiculously crazy. I watched the whole movie and it's two plus hours long. No subtitles. It had no subtitles. The tracking wasn't perfect. But I sat there and I was mesmerized by this movie. And it's funny, I watched the movie with my friend Andrew about, you know, probably about five days ago. And we were still blown away. And I want to say, unlike a lot of uh, like uh, animes that are brought to 4K that don't, it doesn't really look th that much better. This, you have my seal of approval on this because I showed my friend Andrew. I'm like, look how this looks. You can't believe this was made in 1987, the movie. It looks so phenomenal. So little dirt on the screen, so vibrant, so worthy of the 4K. It's worthy of it. I, I'm telling you, if you're a big anime fan from back in the day, get this movie. I don't care how you get it. You do whatever you gotta do to get it. But watch it. Please watch it at least once. At least once. And I'll say this, it's not a movie for everybody because it's long and it takes its time. Nowadays, we just have fast explosions in anime and there's a lot of stuff going on. This movie takes its time and it's a slow burn, but it's methodically brilliant in its design and the, the, the look of the world. And the attention to detail is second to none. They've created a world that's very much like Earth, but it's subtly different. So you feel at home, but you feel you're not at home. It feels like it's an it feels like an alien world, but it's not an alien world. It feels very human. And it's a story, it's a story of the first man into space on this particular planet. That's the story. And I think what what's fascinating about it is that it's about a flawed hero. This this guy is not the greatest guy. And I'm not gonna say anything. He's not a great guy. And it's, but I mean, it's almost such a human story, Royal Space Force, that it's, it's incredible. I could sit and talk for about two and a half hours alone on this movie. I could just talk from the beginning to the end about every detail of it. I've seen it so many times. And uh, yeah, so sorry, I, I got to the end of the episode pretty much. And I really wanted to talk about uh, Royal Space Force because it's so underappreciated and it's one of those ones that I feel not a lot of people have even seen and it's one of those ones I think should be seen by anybody who's an anime fan it's 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 a brilliant work and you'll never see a movie like this again in fact when this movie was originally uh, was produced uh, they were getting the money for it it was it had a bigger budget than Batman 1989 at the time which was gonna come out more, ex more money was poured into this anime film than that film. So wrap your head around that. And I don't think you'll ever see a production like this outside, you know, you know, in Japan ever again for an anime film. I don't think you'll ever see the amount of work. And it's also produced at a very different time in Japan's history. It was like the, just the late 80s and Japan was firing on all cylinders in the way of original material, just like America was with films at that time. Everybody's kind of copying themselves now, but their true originality, I believe, was created back then. And I, I have never seen, still to this day, a more original film than Royal Space Force. And uh, high recommendation, high recommendation. I, I, this is a memorial box set. 
I spent mm, a pretty penny to get it, but because I am such a huge fan. This is not just a film uh, that was just like a throwaway film for me. Oh, it was a cool anime film. This movie changed my perception of anime and films in general for years to come. No, I mean, in my life, there was Star Wars, there was Galaxy Express Triple Nine, there was Robotech back then, and then there was Royal Space Force. And those movies made me, unfortunately, who I am today, uh, a nut job for this stuff. And uh, I'm still a nut job for this movie. Real big recommendation. Okay, we're gonna end up here with one thing. A D&D &D book, Keys from the Golden Vault, right here. And what's kind of interesting about this book is there's many different adventures in it. They're kind of all heists about breaking into a place, stealing a thing. And what I like about it is you can take any of these individual adventures and put them in your own games. And that's what I like about it because I got to talk about this as well. We did something a couple of weeks back that was truly legendary. And that was we got the gang back together. The old gang, the original D&D &D gang from 1988. I got them back, well most of them. Couldn't get everybody, couldn't get the Kados, but we got Rob and Rob's brother to play Dungeons and Dragons together for the first time in 34 years. They'd never played D&D &D together. At my table was the first time they played together. And it was pretty glorious, I, I gotta say. And my friend Andrew was there. He's part of that original crew from back in 88. And then we brought our friend Aaron out and he was also part of that crew back then. And there's just, we were probably just shy of a couple of other people and we would have had a, a complete set. But it's so hard, everybody's all over the country now and all that. But we got together and we played D&D &D all night long and it was glorious. It was a return to, man, being a younger guy when none of us, all of us are married now and have kids, all of us are. But back then, uh, none of us were. We were like 14 years old, just playing DD, hanging out, playing video games all day, having that lifestyle. And it was kind of neat to have all those guys back around the table. And uh, we had a great time, a great adventure. It was awesome. I'm, I'm, my adventures are still taking place in Salt Marsh. I just keep building on the lore in Salt Marsh and all that. And that's what's really cool about like this book. Some great artwork in it that I can take any of the adventures in here and just throw them into my game. And that's what I really like. I like picking up something, plopping it in because I already, I've already designed my world and I know it so well. So. Just to be able to pop something in is perfect like that. But we had a great time and we finished that game around 12.30 at night. Uh, we started like seven o'clock and it was so crazy some of the adventures we went on. People ask me, why don't you record it? Because it's for me. It's the one thing, I put a lot of things on camera, but it's the one thing that's like the special little moment that I want to have for myself and my friends. And we keep it around the table and we love it and we have a great time. And it was nice, we sat and all sat around that table and talked till like two in the morning about the good old days and stuff like that. And I don't know if we'll ever get a meeting like that again, getting everybody back. Because my friend Andrew's up from California and all that. And it's just, it's difficult with everybody with families, getting them together on a Friday night. It's difficult when you get older, it is. And what's so crazy is three of us are all on our road to 50. We're all 49 and we're all sitting around playing D&D and I was like, you know what? This makes me happy because I, I remember seeing us at 14 years old and here we are at 49 years old and we're still pretty much the same playing Dungeons and Dragons. The game has remained, uh, you know, <laughs> our age has changed and all that, but really good times. And it goes to show me how much I've enjoyed Dungeons and Dragons over the years and it's the game that keeps on giving. It does and I'm, you know, I'm going back to play uh, back with Kim again to finish off her adventures as well because a lot, a lot of fun to be had there. So guys, let me know what you picked up in the way of new game stuff. Let me know down below. So anyways guys, until next time.